under this important topic of art and architecture which flourished under the Mauryans this flourishment, this development of the art and architecture under the Mauryans can be seen in various fields for example we will divide it into the various categories and we will deal with the each subtopic separately and that will surely uh, you know clarify your understanding regarding the art and architecture under the Mauryans first of all let us see this development can be seen in the field of Ashokan pillars Ashokan pillars and edicts Ashokan pillars and capitals Ashokan pillars and capitals so the best specimens the best specimens the best specimens of modern art can be seen in the various pillars and capitals which were installed which were planted by Ashoka at various places not planted actually they were mainly carved out from the single stone itself at various places Ashoka as you know he wanted to give he wanted to give his message to the people and the government officials regarding his state policies regarding what is known as his policy of Dhamma which speaks about his policy towards uh, the people his policy which was based upon the tolerance, harmony and brotherhood he wanted to give you know he wanted to give all those messages to the people and his officials through these pillars which he installed at various places these pillars have been found at you know throughout the Indian subcontinent as far as the places like in you know Kandahar in Afghanistan they have been found you know uh, in Lumbuni which is in Nepal they have been found at Girnar it's in Gujarat okay and various other places like you know Amravati Amravati nowadays in Telangana Sarnath which is in modern UP then in Sopora Sopora it is in Maharashtra Meerut and various other places you know there are hundreds of places in which uh, these Ashokan pillars have been found have been discovered what is an important characteristic of these pillars is that they are monolithic they are monolithic they are monolithic they have been engraved from the single stone single large stone single stone and there is no joint there is no joint in between there is no joint they are monolithic they have been engraved they have been carved out from the single stone and these pillars if we can say something about their height the average height of these pillars is about 40 to 50 feet 40 to 50 feet 40, 40 to 50 feet is their average height you know these pillars however you know what what you know these pillars look like as I told you let me give you some brief uh, you know this design and the architectural features of these pillars which have been found uh, which has have been found throughout the uh, you know this Indian subcontinent see there were three important parts of these pillars there was the underground part there was the underground part and this underground part formed the base it formed the base it was the base of these pillars then there was a straight round structure it was it is known as S H A F T shaft 
shaft. It was shaft. It was highly polished and round in structure. Then there were there was a lotus. There was a lotus. I will try to you know make out it here, though I am not a painter at all. There was a lotus kind of structure. This was like this. On that lotus there was a belt. There was a belt. And upon that belt there was the figure of one or more animal. This animal may be elephant, this animal may be horse, this animal may be bull, or you know this uh, uh, or a lion. These animals were at the top most portion of this you know this. So there are three parts. One was base, shaft, and this is known as capital or abacus. This portion is known as abacus. These are the three components of these pillars which Ashoka, you know, this, which Ashoka uh, built it, which Ashoka uh, installed at various places uh, of the country, of the Indian subcontinent. So among these pillars, there are some important pillars. There are some important pillars which form, which form an important component of this uh, portion of this topic of art. You will often see questions. There have been questions. If you will go through the previous year's question papers of the UPSC, you will see the questions there from this component art. It's very important topic. So among these pillars, we have the important pillar at at Loria Loria Nandan Loria Nandangad Loria Nandangad. Lorian at Lorian Andergan, this place is in Bihar. There is a pillar by Ashoka wherein you know uh, which this pillar had all these characteristics. However, on the top, the animal which is there, the animal which is there at Lorian Andergan, it is single loin. It's loin. It is loin on the top. It is lying on the top. Okay, one such pillar, important pillar, at Loria Nandangad, Bihar. This this monolithic pillar, as 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 you know, this as uh, engraved by Ashoka from a single stone, monolithic in uh, character. There is at the top of it the animal which is represented in that column. That is loin. Just remember it. Then. We have another column, we have another pillar which has been found from a place called Rampurva. Rampurva. Rampurva is again in Bihar. Then on this pillar, on the top of this capital, there is bull. There is bull. There is bull. Okay. Then again, one important pillar is in, it, it is Sinhasa. Sinhasa pillar. Sinhasa pillar has come down to us from a present day place in uh, Madhya Pradesh. At Sinhasa again, at Sinhasa pillar, at the top of this, you know, structure the same. At the top of this, the animal which is there is elephant. It's elephant. It's elephant. Okay, it's elephant. Sinhasa. It's elephant. So these, these are uh, the important pillars. However, in addition to these three, the most important pillar, which is you know relevant nowadays as well, this is the pillar at Sarnath. Sarnath pillar. It is a pillar at Sarnath. Sarnath pillar is the most important pillar which has been built by Ashoka and it's important because the government of India has adopted its capital as the emblem in 1950. Sarnath, Sarnath pillar, Sarnath is a place in UP, Uttar Pradesh. So it bears all the characteristics of the pillars, of the monolithic pillars which are built by Ashoka. So it has a bass, it has a polished a round structure which is known as shaft this then it has a lotus then it has a belt on this belt 
there are four animals which has been represented these four animals uh, are are bull okay then then there is horse okay then there is uh, in this lion then there is elephant okay then there is elephant right so this horse lion and elephant and bull they are separated they are separated they are separated by a wheel this wheel bears 24 spokes this wheel bears 24 spokes they are separated by this wheel bearing 24 spokes which has been adopted by India as you know these spokes uh, as you know as an important part of the Indian national flag you will see that you know this is inspired by this thing so these these animals have been separated by this you know by 24 spokes so it, it is the Sarnath pillar it is a Sarnath pillar on the top of this belt there is there are actually four lines there are actually four lines these lines stand back to back so there are four lines which stand back to back on the top of this Sarnath pillar and it is this portion, it is this capital of this pillar which has been adopted by government of India in 1950 as the national emblem of India. As the national emblem of India. It's not the entire pillar which has been adopted as the national emblem of India. It's only the capital, the upper portion of this monolithic pillar which has been adopted as uh, the national, you know, this as the national, this... Uh, uh, emblem of India in 1950. Remember this information. So this is interesting as far as uh, the pillars, the monolithic pillars of Ashoka are concerned. They, he he has you know he wanted to give his message of Dhamma. He is give, uh, he wanted to give his message of Dhamma. He wanted to give his message of various about various state policies to the people living in his kingdom. For example, let's give me an example. What example is there in the form of pillar which he which he, you know, this which he uh, inscribed and which he installed at Lumbini. Lumbini, Lumbini, and other name of this Lumbini where Lord Buddha was born, it is Romundai. The exact place is Romundai. Romundai. When he installed the monolithic pillar there, he engraved upon that the message that this is a place where Gautam Buddha, Lord Buddha, was born. And since he was born here, so he he you know he reduced taxes he reduced the rate of taxation from one sixth to one eighth he gave concessions to the people there and it was messaged it was it was you know it, this message was given to the people through this you know this uh, pillar which he uh, installed at a place called Rumindi or Lumini in Nepal so likewise there are various messages he engraved you know he engraved there were uh, the, the, he engraved uh, those pillars those edicts through the various messages uh, by the various messages and these messages were read by the common people and his officers or by the monks or nuns as to how they have to live how ethically how tolerantly they have to live with one another so that their, you know he could he could uh, you know he could desire the consolidation and the harmony which uh, he desired, uh, you know, th that it should prevail in his kingdom. So this was important aspect of these Ashokan pillars and capitals. So through these Ashokan pillars and capitals, Ashoka, uh, you know, this which Ashoka, uh, Ashoka tried uh, to give his message of policy of Dhamma, Ashoka's Dhamma as we can say, okay. So these pillars were made entirely of stone, Chunar sandstone mainly, okay. These were made up of Chunar sandstone mainly mainly chinar sandstone sandstone it was ashoka who for the first time it was ashoka who for the first time used stone used stone his grandfather chandragupta maurya he used wood 
for the construction of his you know this uh, palace and other things which we will discuss later on but ashoka used stone ashoka used stone and it was james principle it was james principle in 1837 that he was able to read what is written on these what is engraved upon these stones he was only able he was it was only in 1837 that james prince was able to read what is written there you know this on these pillars and one more information is that about these pillars the message which was given on these pillars on these edicts it was in may it was mainly in prakrit language which was mainly in prakrit language although there are you know it was mainly in prakrit language or we can say prakrit language in which script it was mainly in brahmi script it was mainly in brahmi script but the other scripts also prevailed for example in the north western area there was also there the, the, you know the, the messages were given in other important scripts like kharoshti script like kharoshti script then there was also greek script or the aramaic script aramaic script depending upon which type of people used to live in his kingdom for example he wanted to give his message about his dhamma about his you know about his state policies in the local languages which were prevailing in his kingdom and these languages were you know these he, he was having a huge kingdom in which diverse people different people lived they used to speak various languages and depending upon those languages he tried to give his message in their local languages so this these uh, these you know these uh, these pillars the message which are engraved upon these pillars they were you know in in brahmi script haroshti script greek script aramaic but it was mainly brahmi script which was you know uh, which was uh, which he used uh, for the propagation of his message for, for the propagation of his dhamma although for the, in the during in the northwestern provinces uh north western area was kharosti greek and aramaic script also which he uh, which he you know which he propagated uh, in which this language he propagated his dhamma uh, you know for those people for those few people uh, who lived in his kingdom so remember this information about ashokan pillars an important component an important component of the ashokan art of the mauryan art as a whole of the mauryan art and architecture as a whole so it was mainly his you know it was it was it was mainly the pillars and these pillars were found at various places some important places as i told you loria nandanganj in bihar rampurwa then sinhasa and the sarnath pillar which you have to remember okay so after ashokan pillars and edicts after after ashokan pillars and capitals we have the another dimension another area in which the progress of modern art can be seen we have the another area in which the modern in which the progress of modern art can be seen so this was we can say the number 2 component of the modern art it can be seen in the form of stupas stupa so what is stupa stupa is a structure stupa is a structure which is built it which is built it over over a relic of buddha or buddhist monk or lord of buddha of lord buddha or buddhist monk okay sometimes it is also uh, constructed over a monarch or a king or a relic of the king but usually it was you know inspired by buddhism the structures the buildings a kind of structure which were which were builded or uh, you know or the relics uh, for example if we, we could collect some ashes of a famous buddhist monk or uh, the, those ashes are to be buried at a place and over that place a structure uh, like you know the hemisphere hemispherical dome like hemispherical dome this structure if we if we will cut a ball into two pieces then one piece we will you know uh, place on 
uh, earth on, on a piece of land. So that structure is, this structure will be uh, called as the Sutupa. That structure will be called as Sutupa. It was a structure like this. So Ashoka is said to have built it thousands of Sutupas throughout his kingdom. But it, these are, there are only few stupas which have survived, which have come down to us. The famous among those stupas is the one which has come down to us from a place called Sanchi. Sanchi is a place in Madhya Pradesh. It is some 45 kilometers away from its capital, Bhopal. So this Sanchi stupa, it was mainly constructed by, you know, in, uh, uh, with the help of bricks. He used bricks in that. And there were various additions from place to place. Various additions from place to place. Additions from time to time. Which were made to this stupa. And the present day structure is in a modified form. It has uh, presently a gopuram, a gateway as well. It has an enclosure as well. It has, you know, uh, this, it has. Uh, above it, it has this kind of structure as well. Then there is a, you know, a chhatri as well. This kind of structure, you can see it on the internet. This image. So Ashoka mainly, uh, you know, made it in a simple form. He just uh, builded it uh, with the help of bricks. Then there were various additions from the various, you know, by the various dynasties, by the various kings, uh, which were uh, made to this kind of structure, which is known as the stupa. So these tupas also formed an important component of the Mauryan art. Remember this. Among these tupas, it is the Sanchi stupa, which is an important stupa in, uh, in you know, the India, which is a legacy of the Mauryan art. Now, after this, after this stupa kind of uh, structure, Mauryan art, we have the caves. Third important component, third important component of Mauryan art can be seen in the form of caves. About these caves, about these caves, these, these caves were mainly found by Ashoka and his successor, Dasaratha. Dasaratha. These caves were dedicated to various Buddhist. Buddhist, Jain, and sometimes for the Ajivika monks. Ajivika monks. They were dedicated to them, and these monks used to live in these caves. These caves were carved out from a single rock, as I told you. These caves were carved from a rock. And these caves were polished from inside. They were polished from inside. They were polished from inside. And among the various caves, which are, you know, which are attributed to the Mauryan dynasty, the important caves which we have are the caves which have been founded at Barobar Hills. Barobar Hills. Then, Nagarjuna Hills, Nagarjuna Hills, and Karna Hills. These are in the present day state of Bihar, around the Gaya district. The Bodh Gaya district of Bihar, Mohammed Milti, and these caves. So these caves have been found by Ashoka and Dasaratha. These caves have been, you know, these caves, some important caves are there. For example, there are the names which are have been given to these caves and Barabar, at Barabar Hills there are some famous caves like you know like we have the Sudama caves we have the Sudama caves then we have the you know this uh, 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 we have the Rishi caves also okay write down this Sudama caves and Lomas, Lomas Rishi Caves. These caves have been found at Barabar Hills. Similarly, we have the caves at Nagarjuna Hills, Karni Hills. About this Lomas uh, Rishi Caves, 
they have been they were for uh, the living of ajvika monks they have been dedicated for the ajvika monks lomas rishi caves so these lomas rishi caves they have been founded by ashoka's successor dasaratha and sudama caves have been founded by ashoka have been uh, you know this and have been carved out by ashoka lomas rishi caves by dasaratha for ajvika monks sudama caves by ashoka for the buddhist monks okay so remember this information sudama caves at barabar okay then you know these these are in the present state of bihar in and around the gaya district there these karma so this is caves for uh, again for an important component of the more not which you have to remember you have any confusion so you can uh, you know talk to that about the confusion later on when we when we are going to finish this lecture okay so so moving on some fourth you know, we have the fourth important uh, component of the morian art fourth important component of morian it's in the form of you know we cannot uh, what we can say royal palace royal palace royal palace the information about this royal palace has been given by megasthenes in detail megasthenes as you know has written a book what what is the name of that book yeah indica good he has written a book indica he has detailed his information about the mega you know about the royal uh, palace about the royal capital city of pataliputra pataliputra this he says that this pataliputra was a huge city which had 570 towers it has 64 gateways and there was a huge assembly hall assembly hall raj darbar jisko kahenge hum assembly hall which was based upon more than 80 pillars okay so he is saying that this royal palace it was entirely made up of wood that's why it didn't survive because wood doesn't last forever it was the you know after uh, this royal palace this patliputra what the mega scene is say it, they, it was builded by uh, the grandfather of ashoka chandragupta maurya so we can say that chandragupta maurya the founder of the maurya dynasty he used wood he used wood in his buildings that's why they didn't last forever but ashoka built it structures he used stone in his buildings in his in, in his stone pillars in his pillars that's why they lost it they they are presently you know survived this royal palace the, the capital city of this uh, the capital city of chandragupta maurya and the mauryans wherein they wherein the chandragupta maurya built it a huge palace built it a uh, huge uh, you know this palace about which uh, you know this uh, fahin fahin who came to india in around uh, you know 404 AD later on fahin has you know fahin has uh, given fahin has given uh, the information about the magnificence of this uh, capital city of pataliputra later on he has also given some brief description about this royal palace so we can say that this royal palace which was built by chandragupta maurya it's also an important component of the modern art as a whole all right so just remember this information then we have another important component of modern art that will be the fifth component of modern art this was in the form of sculpture this was in the form of sculpture sculpture flourished and progressed under the mauryans progressed under the mauryans the best specimens the best specimens the best example of this art of sculpture can be seen from a structure at doli doli rock cut sculpture doli rock cut sculpture this rock cut sculpture at doli agar aap internet pe dekhoge isko to aapko lagega even if you know uh, it seems like the elephant it seems like the elephant so this 
Doli Rather sculpture at Doli in the province of uh, Kalinga in present day Odisha. Where we are seeing the structure lie is like that. The elephant is coming out from a rock. The elephant is coming. The elephant, you have seen. The elephant is usually represented in various art forms of modern empire because elephant held an important place in the Buddhist religion. Uh, when Lord Buddha is used to have renounced the world, when he left his home, that event is marked by uh, the elephant. So elephant, it 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 you know it comprises an important place in uh, the religious history of Buddhism. That's why elephant is more uh, inscribed on the various elephant is uh, constructed on the various edicts and pillars by uh, which were constructed by Ashoka. So elephant is coming out from a rock. So this kind of this kind of image, this kind of sculpture has been uh, constructed at a place called Doli or Tosali uh, by Ashoka. So this important, uh, this important structure forms an essential component of the art of the sculpture uh, under the Mauryans. So ये आपको याद रखना पड़ेगा. Doli. So ये Doli का exam ये 2015 के you know IS prelims में question आया Doli. So that's why you know I wrote it here. 2015-2016 के प्रीलिम्स में मैंने इस क्वेश्चन को देखा था, तो यस गो थ्रू दैट इनफॉरमेशन। देन अगेन, दिस इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट इनफॉरमेशन अबाउट द मॉरियन आर्ट। अब इन एडिशन टू दिस आर्ट, देर वाज ए कॉमन मेंस आर्ट, देर वाज ए कॉमन मेंस आर्ट, कॉमन मेंस आर्ट। सो द आर्ट व्हिच आई टोल्ड यू दैट वाज those were, the, you know, that art was mostly patronized by the upper class uh, people. The, the people who were very rich and mostly by the, you know, ruling class, by the kings themselves. But there was also the, an art which, which was patronized by the common masses, common people, common people. The common people used to continue, used to have used to worship, they used to worship the Yakshas and the Yakshinis. Yakshas and the Yakshinis. Yakshinis. Yakshas were the male figures and Yakshinis were the female idols, female figures. These, the common people used to worship those images during those times and this art also progressed. This art also progressed during the time of Mauryans. We have come up across various figures, various idols of Yakshas and Yakshins which were there during the Mauryan rule. So, ye bhi aapko yaad rakhna padega from the examination point of view. In addition to this, there was the art of pottery. Pottery also flourished under the Mauryans. It was also a poor man's art, this pottery. It was not patronized by the Mauryan kings. It was patronized by the common man. So this, what kind of pottery prevailed during the Mauryan period? So this pottery was known as NBPW. You must have, you know, you might have gone through this abbreviation. This is Northern, this is Northern Black Polished Wear. Northern Black Polished Wear. So this is the art of pottery, northern black polished wear, which, uh, which prevailed during the Mauryan times. So remember this fact as well. You know, there is a different uh, kind of pottery for the Vedic period. Okay, we have, you know, this, we have the painted grave wear as far as this, uh, uh, the Vedic uh, pottery is concerned. Then we have northern black polished wear. This pottery, this you know, this uh, prevailed over the you know during the modern times. Northern black polished wear. Don't get confused. Remember these uh, facts. Another important information about this modern art is that it bears the influences. It bears the effects. It bears the influences. It bears the influences of. It bears the influences of Greek art. It bears the influence of Greek art and Persian art as well. Persian art as well. So Indian art was affected by the Greek art and the Persian art because India 
Under the Mauryans, they had contact. They had contact with the Greeks and the Persians. As I told you that how during the times of Chandragupta Maurya, there was an alliance between the Greek governor Seleucus Nicator and the Chandragupta Maurya, and how this Seleucus Nicator. He deputed his, uh, you know, ambassador Megasthenes to the court of Chandragupta Maurya, and how that marriage alliance was forged, uh, which the historians are saying that uh, uh, Chandragupta Maurya married a lady from the Greece. Okay, so uh, uh, some historians are saying that her name was Helen, and how she influenced the art at the Mauryan court. So this, this, you know, this influence was there on the Greek art, which. Reach it to its climax, which reach it to its peak. When we, uh, when we, you know, when we will uh, come across Gandhara school of art. That Gandhara school of art was, the, uh, the, you know, the ultimate combination, the ultimate uh, climax of those, uh, ultimate zenith of that art, which was the result, uh, you know, uh, of the Indian and the Greek, uh, this uh, kind of art. जो उनको जो 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 influence एक दूसरे से पे पड़ा इंडियन और ग्रीक आर्ट आर्ट का जो इन्फ्लुएंस पड़ा एक दूसरे पे सो दैट आर्ट जो है वो हमें गंधर्व स्कूल ऑफ आर्ट में वो एग्जांपल्स देखने को मिलती है सो आई रिमेंबर दिस इंफॉर्मेशन एज वेल सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट द आर्ट व्हिच प्रिवेल्ड अंडर द मोरियंस इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दिस यू कैन जस्ट पुट